many people think uh, crypto is really Bitcoin and Ethereum, but actually crypto comes from cryptography and cryptography I mean, is known since uh, Caesar already or, or encryption with Enigma in the Second World War. And already in the 70s, 80s, uh, people realized that cryptography is much more, that you can compute any distributed function jointly by a set of parties uh, without uh, the parties uh, learning the inputs of each other, but just learning the, the function. So crypto is really much older than, than uh, just Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum. And everything what we do today has the foundations uh, in the 80s, uh, early 90s. Uh, and so that's really now has changed that these things could become into practice uh, straight out of research. And if you think about just 10 years ago, if you introduce yourself uh, as a cryptographer, people are not so excited or interested about uh, this profession, but now if you introduce yourself as a cryptographer, people are very interested and very excited. And crypto is really on people's mind uh, these days. And it's kind of strange as well to see because crypto has been around for many ages and uh, thousands of years. But if before it was about like the secrecy of the message, very military or governmental setting, but now crypto is really for people, how to uh, enable decentralization, how to solve actually basically any kind of problem uh, with crypto and crypto would allow uh, you to do that. Yeah, 10 years ago, I mean, the cryptographer, you were very happy if you could uh, you know, solve a hard problem and then present it to your peers at the cryptography conference. And now actually you can be very happy not only to, to, to solve like, like a hard problem, but also immediately work together with engineers and uh, realize that thing and, and bring it out to, to the world and, and for people to use. So that is uh, very exciting. And I think that's also what excites our team. That's why we were able to uh, get a lot of top-notch uh, cryptographers, researchers, computer scientists uh, to, to work uh, at Definity to, to together solve these hard problems and, and uh, get them out and implement uh, into the world. I got into crypto something like more than 25 years ago when I was looking for a research topic to do my, my PhD and I got really fascinated by it, sort of the things you could do and sort of re remembering when, when uh, earlier on I, I sort of uh, wanted to collect a signature from my grandmother and some petition, but th then actually the, the uh, local government in the village would have to certify that, that actually you're eligible to vote. And then she plainly refused to do that because she didn't want them to learn what, what kind of uh, political opinion she was having. And then actually realized in, in, with cryptography you can actually solve that, right? You, you can sort of develop a protocol that allows you to, you know, sign anonymously while still guaranteeing that you're actually eligible to vote. So I first got uh, into computer science and not cryptography. Uh, actually, I was taking ballet classes and um, next door there was also a computer programming class. Um, and then once my parents were late to pick me up from ballet class and I got curious what's going on there. And then later on, I was very interested and asked my parents to sign me up for a programming class. And um, I was uh, also always fascinated and interested um, about math. And I think cryptography is a really very exciting combination between uh, math and computer science when they come together and actually can solve uh, problems that uh, you wouldn't think that they are solvable. When uh, I think uh, about why I joined Definity, yes, of course, it's uh, interesting problems uh, to solve. It's their practical applications and impact on the entire world of computing right now. But also what is not less important is the team because the team, not only how skilled and knowledgeable the team is, how brilliant the team is, of course, but also how nice and open people are for collaboration and how easy it is to work with such people, because without that, you cannot build the most complex thing in this world. When people join because they like to you know, solve hard problems, get excited about uh, doing that. But also they dived in and started working with engineers to really bring it out and make it happen. And everybody sort of, at least a lot of people have like, you know, publication history that is huge and impressive. And they all put that on side and just got in and say, OK, now instead of writing papers about it, actually we work with engineers to, to make it happen and give it out to the world and change the world together. Some companies have research division is like a luxury, right? They uh, 
they work on like very far-fetched uh, problems on the cutting edge research, but not all of that research is actually brought into the products. In Definity, research is not a luxury for us, it's really a necessity and that's why every team is a composition of researchers and engineers that work together every day. And I think it's very rewarding for researchers to see their ideas to be implemented and applied in the real world, as well as it's very rewarding for engineers to work on such cutting edge technologies and implement something that was never implemented before that. I think it's very exciting uh, for everyone here at Definity. I'm working on, on the core of the uh, internet computer, so the, the protocol that drives uh, the internet computer. It's, it's a probably the, the most complex protocol that uh, was ever done, ever developed. So, so many parts that have to play well together from non-interactive uh, key generation for the different data centers uh, that uh, together run the protocol towards consensus, uh, how nodes can upgrade when we change the protocol, when we change the software, how these nodes can upgrade the, the, the system without the system slowing down or, or failing. The internet computer is a decentralized system it's uh, defined by an internet computer protocol that uh, is run by a number of uh, parties, a uh, number of data centers, and it's run on the open internet, so it's an open, an open protocol. But it also means it has to be very secure because the open internet is a hostile environment. Right? It's like developing uh, technology for, for Mars, right? Sort of like a very hostile in, in environment, and that's, uh, that's actually very challenging to make that secure. Indeed, and along the way you need to solve different kinds of very hard problems. Actually, along all the way of the stack from bottom to the top, if we start even from the bottom with peer-to-peer -peer and how we disseminate artifacts between nodes in this hostile environment, how we do it the most efficient way and how we uh, define the most appropriate network topology. Then moving up, there is a consensus protocol. How do you make all these nodes running in a hostile environment agree with each other and have the same picture of them? How do, they, do you make them to actually derive a truly random values by just communicating with each other and not trusting, actually, uh, only trusting the majority of these nodes? And there's other protocols that, that, that actually are needed as well. So there's uh, like resumptions. If some nodes go down for whatever reason, uh, may, maybe they're cut off uh, from, from the internet for, for a while. So you need to have a protocol that allows them to resume, to sort of get the state from, from the other, uh, other nodes. Of course, again, in, in, a, in a way that they, they don't have to trust any single node, but just trust the majority of them. Or a protocol to upgrade the software. Uh, again, a protocol between all these nodes uh, where they have to sort of agree uh, when to change uh, the version, when, when to sort of shut, out, shut down the, the old version and then start a new, new version. So you wanna, wanna avoid like hard forks uh, here, just uh, you know, like gracefully run one version of the protocol and then the next version of the protocol. Again, again, like, like very regularly updating uh, the software uh, as the computer goes on and, and computes his stuff. Or, for example, how you make different uh, entities or applications running on the system talk to each other in an authentic way. How you make sure that the state that every node on the network has is actually certified and the node that is uh, behind can uh, catch up on that. And actually, to catch up, you need to really compress the state in a very and authenticate it and you need to really do it efficiently. And that's how all the cryptographic tools uh, come together to hash and compress the state, but also sign it, but not sign a huge amount of data that needs to be exchanged, but only a small part of it, but enough to make sure that the state is authentic, that the node exchange with each other. Yeah, and the state potential is, is, is huge, right? It could be uh... 20 terabytes that you would have to communicate and 
So it's also important that uh, the nodes have a very efficient peer-to-peer uh, -peer network and can uh, sort of get this information from, from many different places. So that, uh, you have to chunk up the whole state so, so that the nodes can catch up uh, individually, uh, retrieving the information from all the different nodes uh, around them. Not only have to, you have to prove uh, that the protocol is secure, but then you also have to make sure that the implementation is secure, that you, you do not uh, do, do any mistakes there as well. And to date, uh, no one has ever approved such a big uh, proto uh, protocol or composition of uh, a number of cryptographic protocols secure. So that's also like an area where we do really novel work and, and very, very challenging work. So we need the best cryptographers in the, in, in the world to, uh, uh, to address this problem. Exactly, uh, both cryptographers and also engineers and uh, systems people that uh, all come together to make sure that the protocol is secure and system that implements it is also secure and um, uh, cannot be hacked. Designing and building cryptographic protocols is, is, is really hard. So it's, I mean, a lot of things that you need to consider. And on one hand, it has to be efficient and correct. I'm very excited about the Sodium launch. We get to show a few of the key technical pieces that we have invented here at Definity towards our grand vision of the internet computer. And if there is any team in the world that can pull it off and make it happen, it's the Definity team. <laughs>